How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and today we're going to be going over the latest pretty major update to Android, which is Android 8.1. It's not a completely new version, but they made some significant changes, so it should be pretty interesting, especially if you have one of the latest phones that is capable of upgrading to this, and it was released just a couple days ago, and it is available either over the air, so you might be getting a notification that you can upgrade, or Google also provided the update files that you can apply yourself if you want, but that's beyond the scope of this video. You can look up how to do that if you want it right away. So let's get into these updates. Now the first one is actually kind of interesting. It's not really a feature per se, but almost like an entire new system of Android that Google is calling Android Go. It's basically a very light version of Android that is meant to be run on lower end budget devices, such as those that have less than one gigabyte of RAM specifically. And the idea is that not every Android phone is a flagship with tons and tons of processing power. There's a lot of very basic phones that function, but maybe don't really run a lot of the latest apps that are really huge in file size. So they created this version that has specialized apps. So for example, there's a YouTube Go, Google Maps Go, there's Gmail Go, and you would install this in your Go Android operating system. And if you do have a device running Android Go, there will also be a special version of the Google Play Store. And one feature of that is it will suggest apps that are more compatible and better running on your Go system. So for example, one example they gave was Instagram. It'll suggest a more lightweight version of Instagram that presumably Facebook wrote specifically for devices that maybe aren't the most powerful. So it'll list different apps that probably would run better on your device instead of having to run the latest that chew up all your memory. So this isn't probably a feature that most people will use, but it still will open the door for a lot of people who want the latest stuff, but don't have a super powerful phone. So I guess Android Go isn't necessarily a feature, and it's not like Android 8.1 includes this, rather just 8.1 is the operating system that it will use when it's launching. So still, I'm gonna put it in the same basket and you might find it interesting, even though most people probably won't need it, but for those of you who do, it'll be pretty awesome. All right, now this next feature is pretty awesome actually, but unfortunately for some of you, it's only available on the latest Pixel phones, so Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL, because it uses what is called the Visual Core chip that is built into these devices, but wasn't really enabled before. And this Visual Core chip basically is a dedicated chip on the Pixel boards that is meant to process images. So it allows different apps through an API to use Google's really amazing HDR Plus feature without having to use the special Google app, which was required. Before you had to use Google Camera app and any other devices could only take basic photos. Now a lot of the articles that I read suggest that the Visual Core chip was completely disabled up until now, but I'm not 100% sure whether it's the case that it was disabled altogether and was now activated so even Google camera photos will be improved or that the Google camera was still using it before and now it's unlocked for all apps. But in any case, it should improve photos significantly because I mean, look, you're getting a dedicated chip that's gonna be processing these images and we know that the Google camera app takes amazing photos with the HDR Plus, so now other apps can take advantage of that. As I mentioned, you have to actually enable this feature even if you do update. So to do that, you go to the developer options, and if you don't know how to enable developer options, it's pretty easy, just look that up. And then you go to the debugging section, and then look for the option called Camera HAL HDR Plus, and toggle that on, and that is what enables this feature. For some reason, it's not enabled by default. You have to go in the developer options, but it's easy enough to enable it. Again, you have to be on a Pixel device to really use it, because the chip isn't on any other devices. All right, so now let's move on. And yes, this next feature, don't worry, it is available on all devices. And that is that you can now see the battery level of a Bluetooth device you're connected to 
just by swiping down on the notification bar. Before, of course, it would show that you're connected to something, but you couldn't really see. You'd have to check on the device itself. But now, in addition to going into the settings and going to the Bluetooth section, you could also look at it there, and it shows the percentage. Now, when you swipe down from the notification bar into the quick settings, it'll show you a little icon with the battery that will fill up, obviously, according to how much charge is on that device. Now, this next feature is actually pretty awesome, and that is that Google will now be compiling lists of Wi-Fi speeds for public hotspots. So when you go into the Wi-Fi settings to pick a hotspot to connect to, if it's public, it'll now potentially be able to show you the speed of different Wi-Fi hotspots before you ever connect. So you may know that Right now, Google kind of uses data to compile a list of safe Wi-Fi hotspots that you can connect to, like for chain restaurants like McDonald's or something. They're probably trustworthy. And then it also encrypts that data so it's completely safe, even though it's a public hotspot. So now, presumably, they're going to be also testing all those hotspots for different speeds. So if someone walks into a restaurant and Google is saying, all right, well, this hotspot's really slow, it'll give a rating for that hotspot for the next people that show up. And apparently there will be four different ratings, and those are slow, okay, fast, and very fast. Now, this hasn't been totally rolled out yet because I guess Google has to compile all this data first, so it's not like they instantly have all this. And of course, it might only be available from devices running 8.1, so they have to wait till a lot of people upgrade to collect the data as well. And based on some reports that people have been doing, they kind of test the speeds for what each one will be. And they say that basically the slow rating is zero to one megabits per second. A okay rating is one to five fast is 5 to 20 megabits per second, and then very fast is 20 megabits per second plus. Also, if you do want to enable this, you have to navigate into the following settings. So you go to regular settings app, then network and internet, then Wi-Fi, then at the bottom you scroll down and go to Wi-Fi preferences, advanced, and then network rating provider, and presumably after that, if there is data available on any hotspots, it should show it now. So I think this is pretty awesome. It's gonna allow people to use trusted Wi-Fi hotspots without having to worry about the normal issues because Google and Android will be putting them on a VPN and you can actually see the speeds ahead of time. Like I've said many times before, you never wanna to connect to a public Wi-Fi hotspot if you're not connected through some sort of encrypted VPN because there's a lot of issues that I'm not really gonna get into, but it's good that Google is protecting its users. All right, now finally we have another small update, which is just for Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL devices, and that is that you can now change the color mode to be more saturated. So some of the complaints to the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL were apparently people didn't really like the color schemes. They looked a little bit off to them at least. So now if you go into the settings and display options, you'll see the choices between natural, boosted, or saturated colors. Now, me personally on the Pixel 2, I do actually think I like the saturated options more. Maybe it's not as realistic, but really, who cares about that? You're not doing any color grading on your phone. But I did notice also that it kind of changes the color balance to a little bit more of a warmer color, so I guess that kind of helps with more looking saturated. I'm not sure. I don't know why they decided to do that instead of the standard color balance, but you might notice it looks a little bit more warmer. That's just because of the way they did that. So I guess those are just the features that I thought were worth noting. There's a lot of different bug fixes and stuff, but those are pretty minor. And I guess I would say that this wasn't really a major update. There's a couple that were notable at least, but nothing worth getting excited over. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You just click on those. And if you want to subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And also consider enabling notifications by clicking the bell next to the subscribe button. Again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.